I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the concepts in Chapter 8 that were on one of the quizzes that were not really covered anywhere else. So there was some terminology that you do need to be familiar with. And some of this you've already seen, but I'm going to very quickly review it. We have been writing class files for a good part of the year now. And remember, the class is just the blueprint or the template that we're going to use to create objects. It has our variables, our instance variables, which we also call state. That refers to the data that will be eventually stored in those variables. And we have behaviors, which we call methods. So a class is a blueprint, and it's going to define the state, or the instance variables, and the behavior, or the methods, that every object of this particular type will have. And we say that class files are named using nouns, like dog, student, bicycle. So a dog might have a, a state or a characteristic or an instance variable, like name, birth date, owner, etc. And it might have behaviors like bark, eat, etc. And we might write those as methods. Bark might print wolf on the screen a certain number of times, for example. So we have the class file, that's our .java file, and that is our blueprint. And so we create objects from these class files. So we can say an object is an instance of a class. An object is generally created by using the constructor in the class file. And we say that we instantiate an object when we create it using our constructor like dog Stevie equals new dog. I've created or instantiated an object by using that line of code, invoking the constructor. Uh, so we instantiate an object and we create it and we set up the instance variable. So when I do dog Stevie equals new dog, in memory I've set up name and owner and birth year or birth date and all of that stuff that goes along with all of the instance variables that go along with that object. Now we can have multiple objects of the same class type in our declared or instantiated in our main, okay? So I might have Stevie might be a dog, I might create, create another dog named Coco and another dog named Broxy. So I can have multiple objects of that type in my main. Now objects have, as we said, and, and you're used to this, this is what you've been doing for a while now, you've been creating objects using these class files. And we know that objects have state, which those are our variables, our instance variables, and we know objects have behavior, which become our methods. And so an object state is stored in fields or instance variables. You'll see the word fields used for instance variables sometime. So the state is the data. It's the name of the dog. It's the breed of the dog. It's the owner's name, and so on. And of course, the behaviors are shown by methods. Now within a class file, we will generally have three types of variables. Instance variables, the ones you're most familiar with, declared at the very top or very bottom of the class file, outside of any methods, outside of the constructor, and we make those private, so private string name, for example. Then in a class file, we can have local variables. These are variables that are declared inside a method. Generally, sometimes you'll have a, a local variable in a constructor, that's a little unusual because we're generally using the constructor to create or set up the instance variables. Uh, so an example is if I have a method called addNums and I declare within it a variable called sum and I just put int sum, I don't put public, I don't put private, I just put data type and variable name. That sum is a local variable. It's declared inside the method and it is used only inside the method. And then we have this new concept of a class variable, and this is where the word static comes in. And this is a variable that if I have a hundred dog objects, maybe I want a counter variable that at the end of the program I can do a print line and I can say, tell me how many total dogs were, say, adopted today. I might have, a, I want a counter to keep a running total of that for me. Well, I can't declare that counter as an instance variable because it will only count, it'll have, you know, a hundred instance variables, each with the value one in it for each one of the objects. I need an instance variable 
that I only create once in memory, no matter how many dog objects I create, and it accumulates the value 100 because that's how many dogs were adopted. I have to do that with a static or class variable. Now, it is also declared outside of the method. It can be declared up with the instance variables in the class file, but it will have the keyword static in it. And usually they're public. They can also be private. But public static and then the data type, int total number of dogs adopted, int total number of bicycles. The idea being I'm keeping track of some total for every instance of the object I create, and I need a way to do that where I only allocate one place in memory, and I'm constantly updating it no matter what object I'm working with. Now, encapsulation is a term that you'll see. It's one of the four premises of object-oriented programming. And encapsulation is or means that we're wrapping the data, the instance variables, and the code acting on them, the methods, together in a single unit or file. You've been doing this all year now. You've been encapsulating information and methods and behaviors into class files. So the variables of the class are hidden from other classes. We're talking about the instance variables, meaning that we make our instance variables private, we make our methods public, and we put everything that relates to a concept in a class file, and that is encapsulation. We also call it data hiding because we have private instance variables that can only be accessed or manipulated through these public getter, setter, accessor, mutator methods instead of being directly accessible in main, and we call that data hiding. So in main, I can't say stevie.name equals stevie for my stevie object. I can say stevie.setName, quote, stevie, quote, and let my public method, or set name, sorry, set name manipulate that instance variable, but I can't directly manipulate it. So that's encapsulation or data hiding. And how do we make sure we're doing this? This is something is a good thing. We're supposed to encapsulate. And we do that by making our uh, instance variables. I should say instance here because we know we have static, right? Those can be public. But our instance variables should be private. And we have public getter setter methods that allow us to manipulate those values. So now I know I said there are three types of variables within a class file, and we call them instance variables, local variables, or static or class variables. But there, there's also the idea of uh, two other categories that all variables can fall into. Primitive, which we've talked about, that's where we declare int, string, double, float, well actually let's say int, float, double, char, even though that's not part of the AP subset. We declare those, we've used those a lot in main, you can use them as local variables in a method, those are the primitives that are provided to you, you don't need to do any imports for them. Um, but then when we create an object, that's not a primitive variable, that's an object reference. So when I do dog stevie equals new dog, now I have an object reference. So what we mean is that primitive variables are declared using the data type, the name, and then you can put equals value. You've done that, and you should be pretty familiar with that. The object reference contains or refers to the handle of the object that has been created using the new object name syntax. So dog stevie equals new dog. Now I, stevie is an object reference. It's a reference to multiple things in memory. It's a reference to the name, the breed, the birth year. So Stevie is the reference to an object of type dog, and the line where I have new dog, paren, paren, where I'm calling that constructor, that creates the object, allocates memory uh, for that instance of dog, and it sets up all the instance variables. And after creating the object, I can refer to or access it with the handle Stevie, because Stevie is really a pointer to all of the other variables that relate to it. So we say that's an object reference. Now remember, now we're skipping back to the idea of headers. Remember with a header, and we've, we've talked about this before earlier in the year, the method header has multiple parts, and you've been doing this all year long. Public is the access specifier the scope, the visibility, 
That means where it can be seen and used, and the options are public and private. If I want it to be used in Maine, I better make it public. If I want other class files to use it, I better make it public. If I want the method to just be used only by methods within the class file, I can make it private, but it's unusual to, to do that. Of course, our constructors are always public. Int is the return type. We can have string, int, double. Uh, we can also return types of objects. I can have public dog and then something that's kind of unusual. But we've got the, the visibility modifier, then the return type, then the name. That's pretty straightforward. And then in parentheses, we have our parameter list. It might be empty. It might just be paren paren, or it might be one or more variables that are being passed in. And string and double are the parameter data types, the, the uh, parameter types there. Now, overloading a method means I can have the same method declared more than once in a file. I can have two or more methods with the same name, just like I can overload constructors. I can have multiple constructors in a file. The return type is not what matters in making them different so Java knows which one to use. The way that you help Java tell the two apart, or the three or the five, however many methods you have with the same name, is that the parameter lists have to be different. They have to have either a different number of parameters, like this one takes maybe one parameter, say the next one takes five parameters, so Java can tell them apart that way. Or if they both take five parameters, they have to have different data types. Like if one takes five strings, one better take five ints or one string and four ints or something like that. So there has to be a way for Java to tell them apart, and it's based on the number and types of parameters. That must be somehow unique to each different version of the method, whether it's a constructor or whether it's a basic method overload. So I wanted to go back and revisit constructors. We've talked about classes, objects, state behavior. We've talked about instance variables, local variables, class or static variables. We've talked about primitives versus object references. And we've talked about method headers and all the parts of those. So then we've talked about overloading. Now we're going to talk specifically about constructors. And remember, a constructor is a specific type of method. It's what creates the object reference. It creates the object. It will never have a return type. It will always be like public dog or public student. There will never be void or int or anything in there. And it will always have the same name as the class file. So if the class is public student, the constructor <coughs> will also be public student. Remember we have provided to us, without ever doing any code, a default constructor for each class we write. And it doesn't really take in any parameter values. It just allocates the memory for the instance variables and defaults them. So if you use the default constructor and you have an instance variable for your class called string name, and you might have one called int birth year, if you use the default constructor, so you would do dog Stevie equals new dog paren paren semicolon, not passing any values to it. The default constructor, that is what that's invoking, and it will just set up in memory one string and one int, and it will default them to the default values for the applicable data type, but it won't assign any values. It just allocates the memory, and sometimes that's fine, and then you can use your getters or setters to update name and birth year. So when we do a custom constructor, we set our values through the parameter list for the instance variables. With the default constructor, we're just letting the memory get allocated and they default to zero or empty string or whatever. You can have multiple constructors in a file so long as you can distinguish them by the parameter list. And again, we get back to that when we're sort of overloading things. And let me wrap up really quickly here if I can. Um, I'll have to do a second video. But remember, we can have multiple constructors giving us different ways to initialize our objects and their instance variables. And remember, constructors visibility or scope, also called access modifier, will always be public, at least for purposes of this course and for purposes of the AP Java subset.